Okay, welcome to GCSE Geography at uh, Beckenham Harris. Uh, my name's uh, Mr. Brown, and uh, I'm, I've been the coordinator of geography at uh, the school since April. And I've got a team of uh, four other geography teachers. And uh, we have, well, I will share, I'll share with you now uh, the, the OCR syllabus and uh, some careers in, um, issues and uh, some of the success of the department and where geographers can go. So, um, sort of nice introduction is geography, what, what is it? Why, why is it um, seen as one of the sort of academic, more uh, aspirational GCSEs alongside history, um, economics at A-level, uh, et cetera? Well, the, the, the left side of your brain, um, psychologists would say, is, is very much about numeracy and statistics and numbers and problem solving. Uh, so we equate that with much of the sciences and maths, obviously, uh, and geography does involve a great deal of that. Uh, and then on the right hand side, we have the sort of creative sphere where we um, argue and make uh, judgments about things and, and read lots of things and process ideas and opinions. And, and really, geographers are renowned for, for doing both. So it's, it's a challenging subject indeed. So uh, the, the department, uh, yeah, in the last eight years has had some uh, terrific results, actually, um, both nationally and against the other Federation Harris schools. Um, we, we do very well indeed. And, uh, you know, it's a privilege to be here after 25 years of teaching all over the world and uh, in, in some cracking schools. And I, I've um, got a great team of Miss Crouch, um, quite, quite new into the profession, actually, and, but uh, an incredible teacher, Miss Hammer, who's been here uh, some time now. And uh, um, despite being a geologist, she uh, does relish the human geography uh, very much so. And uh, then we have some very senior teachers, our deputy head of learning, Miss Richardson, and our head of school, Miss Rispoli. Uh, so we've got a very strong team of uh, geographers, a uh, very able department. And uh, looking at uh, where you could be going, there's, I mean, there's hundreds of people that uh, have done amazing things with geography and geography degrees. These are probably some that you might have seen on television in films. Obviously, our future King of England dropped, geography, uh, dropped his art history, I think it was, at um, St. Andrews for Geography. Um, some, some explorers, even Air Jaws in there. Um, but our re re most more recent Prime Minister, um, Theresa May, may st studied geography at university. Um, so many, many people have gone on to great things. And uh, careers-wise, I'll I'll sort of review that at the end as well. So the, the OCR syllabus um, is very broad. There is a, there's a great deal of knowledge, lots of skills, uh, some field work as well. Throughout the two years, you will do physical geography um, at some point. So to, in, in year 10, we look at earthquakes and volcanoes, global hazards. And uh, we also look at extreme weather. So we look at tornadoes, uh, typhoons, droughts um so and, and it's quite a complex subject actually atmospheric circulation so we look at why climates are different and uh, and, and the impacts of global warming so that links into the next subject changing climate um, and geographers really trying to understand how oceans volcanoes all sorts of natural cycles as well as man-made are changing our climate and how that's impacting the world and the uk and and certainly um refugee movements uh, food security um, in terms of uh, some conflicts as well that we're seeing, possibly climate related now and desertification. And um, that links in with the extreme weather as well. Distinctive landscapes is towards the end of year 10, uh, where we look at rivers uh, and the coast. And we, we take you all uh, in minibuses to the River Darrant uh, on the edge of the M25, starting near Seven Oaks, Westrum, going all the way towards es uh, Ainsford. We don't go all the way to Dartford because it gets too deep, but. Um, Students and teams will gather a, a lot of data on this river, um, a chalk river, very uh, beautiful sort of uh, um, landscape. And we look at uh, all sorts of quantitative data. And in, in the examination, students will have to analyze what they did on that day and how they process the results um, in terms of graphical statistical techniques, uh, what their conclusions were, why their data was biased. So they look at uh, sampling frameworks like stratigraphic and systematic of how they went about the day. So there's no coursework, but uh, they, they will have to remember what they did on that fieldwork day from the homeworks and, re, and sort of re-examine um, uh, some of their findings. 
So, um, and th the physical geography finishes with ecosystems, um, specifically the rainforests of the world and uh, desert ecosystems uh, are sort of uh, two of the major ecosystems we look at. Um, oh, and the Arctic and Antarctica is the, the other, the, the prime one actually uh, with the rainforests. So the Arctic and Antarctic uh, ecosystems and, and we look at indigenous people, we look at uh, some of the conflict, uh, mining resources in these areas. Um, and some of the sustainable ways of managing rainforests, for example, some of the uh, conflicts with oil palm uh, debt in these developing countries and mining. Uh, we look at ecotourism, for example, in Costa Rica and um, Bolivia. So, yeah, the, the, my, most of your physical geography will be in year 10. Um, the climate change, the change in climate uh, creeps into year 11. So. That's 35% of your final grade, uh, all of that. And then the other part is called is the human geography. And some of this is in year 10, uh, but the majority of this is in year 11. So we do UK in the 21st century, which is really looking at the British climate, water stress, where people live in this country, what sort of jobs, how our economy has changed in the last 50 years or so, the deindustrialization to um, the current sort of post-industrial office, science park, um, heavy industry of the Teesside area really is, is left and our role in, in um, the world actually. So we look at, you know, British media, NATO, how the UK is playing a part in the Commonwealth, NATO or trade and some of the trade deals. So it's a very contemporary uh, understanding of Britain, how, how um, British physical geography and human geography is quite unique. Uh, we look at things like aging population and population pyramids and uh, some of the challenges of an aging population as well and the housing crisis in the UK, uh, as well as water security problems and energy security problems. Then in year 11, we, we uh, look, oh, sorry, towards the end of year 10, sorry, we look at urban futures where we will look at cities like Lagos, um, London. Um, we look at slums in Lagos and regeneration of, of urban areas in the world, sustainable city sort of projects. Um, and in this country, we look at re-urbanisation um, of Stratford and the London Docklands. And, and in year 11, uh, sorry, this is at the start of year 11, uh, we will take you to Canary Wharf and Stratford. And in Stratford, you will do some uh, urban field work, um, questionnaires to, to local residents along the high street, looking at the impacts of the Olympic legacy of 2012 and the regeneration of East London and uh, and sort of what type of people are living in this area and how we sort of um, can we conclude that there has been successful regeneration. The other the other topics, uh, dynamic development, you, you would have done a little bit in year nine. Um, actually, all these topics you would have done a little bit of in year seven, eight, nine. Um, div dynamic developments, why there's poor and rich countries. And so quite a lot of economic geography. We look at Ethiopia. And, and why it's been struggling. And um, we look at things like trade and aid and debt um, and, and some of the, uh, the globalization issues of why there's rich and poor countries. So a, a great topic and uh, um, lots of uh, little case studies. Resource reliance is one of the final topics in, in year 11. And it's basically looking at Malthusian doom and gloom that the world's running out of resources, uh, quite pessimistic, and we're gonna have more conflicts uh, and wars. And then we try and look at some sort of more optimistic uh, Bowser up is a key player in this and how actually genetic modified crops, for example, uh, the Green Revolution, big dams, um, renewable energies are going to solve the world's problems of resources. And actually population is slowing down massively now. Globalization is create, getting lots of people out of poverty. So we'll be quite optimistic as well. And we'll focus on food uh, security. So famines and and how uh, farming is improved in countries like Tanzania as a case study. And uh, we'll also look at um, energy and water security a little bit, but the, the main focus is food security there, not just in the UK, but the whole world. And uh, so, so yeah, with, with the human geography, uh, again, it's 35%, another very similar exam with some field work thrown into the exam. So you have to remember what you did um, in Stratford. Um, Canary Wharf is more for your exam case study for urban futures, but uh, Stratford, you will collect some data and analyse it just like you did with the rivers. And then that leaves the uh, most difficult paper, paper three, 
which is a decision making paper and it's 30 percent of your grades the longest one 90 minutes uh, so os map work skills um, that come through the whole of your five years of studying geography really a lot of these maps and different graphical techniques line graphs against scatter graphs for example um, is quite interesting looking at interquartile ranges looking at uh, dispersion diagrams population pyramids so it's all skill based but it will include a uh, a major resource of uh, photographs and, and it's almost an English exam actually paper three you have to analyze and evaluate different problem solving given given uh, it could be a scenario in a national park where there's some planning going ahead and you have to agree or disagree with it it could be something about water security in Britain and they might show you some pipelines and desalination plants it might be about sustainability of cities in Nigeria or um, a South American city. So we, we really don't know what's going to come up. So it could be anything from the whole of your two years, um, any topic. But it's, 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 as I say, more of an English exam because it's your way of manipulating and showing off how balanced your arguments are, weighing up economic, social, political, environmental um, issues. So um, that's the syllabus. And here's some examples of some questions, paper three. Uh, deconstruct, evaluate, analyze, suggest reasons. Uh, so some of the questions that you might get. And then for paper one and two, um, interesting, compared to history, possibly, the, the extended answers aren't as long, 11, 12 marks, so just a few paragraphs. Uh, a lot of marks are picked up from graphs and short answers, one, two, three marks. And there are some six mark questions, which is a couple of paragraphs. So in terms of Obviously, A-level geography and, and uh, history are very similar in terms of the essays. But at GCSE, I'd say geography is possibly lends itself to um, students that are able to get more marks from shorter answers. And the extended answers are probably more accessible to people who, um, to students that struggle a little bit with extended writing. So we certainly do a lot of modelling of, of, of answers, the extended answers for homeworks through the two years and uh, many tests. So there's sort of questions you'll get for paper one and two. And you can see how they, um, you, you will have, here's a question about fieldwork. You would have carried out a piece of fieldwork, it says, to what extent was the primary data successful? So all schools would have gone to a river or coast um, or some sort of urban geography. In paper two, you can see there, um, it's got a, um, something about transport. Actually, that was from paper three, yeah, good. That's, sorry, that's paper two. Yeah, that's, that is uh, about the work. Right, so paper three, some, some more examples of some questions. So again, paper three, 12 marks would be about 15, 20 minutes of work. Well, probably closer to about 15 minutes work. So it's not a big essay. It's probably three or four paragraphs in 15 minutes, gives you an, under, an idea. So geography, um, some sort of images that we think of geography, certainly 50% really is physical geography, understanding the natural environments, the natural vegetation, some bio, biology, some biogeography, if you like, ecology, coasts and rivers, which is almost uh, linked into the geology and weathering and landscapes and then volcanoes. So there is a fair bit with atmospheric science of um, our climates and weathering, but human geography in terms of farming and uh, economic activities and cities um, and development is a, is a large core. This is, I just thought this would give you a sort of understanding of um, the markability of geography, its breadth and depth of uh, different skills and, um, and challenging language and being able to analyse lots of statistics, numbers and ideas. And uh, this was the chief economist from Google, actually, what he had to say. And he was really, you know, if you read this carefully, oh, is he talking about geography? It certainly is. Uh, understanding data, extracting, analysing, forming opinions. And uh, finally, uh, some final sort of points about uh, um, this. This is uh, a quote from uh, uh, Richard Ward, Chief Executive Lloyds of London Insurance Company and uh, another uh, Zurich Financial Services. Geographers are in demand in the business financial world just as much as historians, economists. They're seen as... Um, students that have obviously been challenged and uh, been resilient in terms of their independent learning, their way of arguing and using data and presenting ideas. And uh, 
yeah, finally, look, there is a whole host of careers geographers go into, uh, not just business and finance, accountancy, but aid workers, there we go, the armed forces, diplomats, uh, law, uh, we've got uh, working in town planning, surveying, uh, there, it's, it's endless. So, uh, I hope to um, inspire many of many of your sons daughters to come and, and uh, join the geography uh, um, numbers next year. Obviously, they can do history as well, and uh, they have a, a free option of uh, choosing subjects that they enjoy the most. Thank you. Thank you.